Kenya has grown some of the world's best coffee for more than a century, today trading nearly $200 million worth of the bean a year. But only very recently have people started embracing their own local caffeine fix. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this macchiato is one of just 10,000 cups of coffee that will be drunk in this very chain of uh, coffee shops across Kenya today. And now that's due to a growing coffee drinking culture in a country that has always exported coffee but never really drunk it before. Instead, it's stuck to tea. What's changing is the burgeoning middle class, a growing consumer culture, thanks to joints like this one. 16 years ago, Java Coffee House opened its first shop in Nairobi. Today it has 31 and counting, now opening 10 a year as it spearheads the rise of Kenya's cafe culture. Now it's, it's pretty much widespread. Anybody who has an income of a certain level is trying coffee and enjoying the gourmet coffee, coffee shops across the city. Yeah. I think it was a bit of a shame that Kenya grows this fabulous coffee, yet we as Kenyans were not consumers of coffee. We, we grew up drinking tea at the breakfast table, and coffee was not really an option. Part of coffee's growing appeal is thanks to increasingly chic delivery. I've come to Java House's roastery to meet Kenya's top barista. Eric Kathinji won last year's national barista competition, coming 39th in the World Championships. He magics up everything from love hearts to more complex ferns for Nairobi's froth-loving clientele. I came here to beg a lesson from a pro in the secrets of latte art. So we first uh, pour it up yeah. and bring up the crema. Oh my god. Oh my, oh my goodness, that's extraordinary. It's a fern. Yes. Is that the rosetta or the fern? That is the rosetta or the fern. I thought you did it with a stick. No, we don't. Okay. The coffee bug has now spread beyond Kenya's few rarefied spots. In the capital's Kibera slum, instant coffee starts the day for motorbike taxi riders, and corner shops sell single sachets for three pence a go. When you drink coffee, it brings up your status. Yeah, your status as a person mm. brings it up. You're seen as a different person, you see. While drinking coffee might be seen as a status move in itself, the country's experts are focused on quality. Kennedy Kea is what's known as a cuppa for Dormans, a Kenyan coffee company in business since the 1950s. Akin to a wine taster, Kennedy has spent 20 years developing his ability to balance acidity, body and flavour in a mere slurp, every bit as hard to manage as it sounds. So when coffee is good, you'll have something like a chocolate flavour, vanilla flavour, but uh, when it has some uh, defects, you find it cupping maybe earthy, you find it uh, cupping uh, uh, leather sort of, or it's smoked, or rubber flavor, those oh. are defects. While Dormans, among Kenya's top five coffee buyers, still exports the vast majority of its bags abroad, the domestic market is growing, giving the green bean a future closer to home. So this is where it all starts, one of Kenya's coffee plantations that produce some of the world's best coffee and bring in vital foreign exchange for the country. But that's no longer the end of it. Whether you're a banker or a biker, coffee is increasingly Kenya's choice brew. For the Financial Times, this is Katrina Manson feeling distinctly caffeinated.